welcome to Unmuted. We are hearing from so many of you right now about your concerns uh, with what's going on on college campuses. And as you know, Senator Rosen and I led a resolution completely bipartisan calling out and condemning these attacks. And we know that Hamas is a brutal terrorist organization. They're recognized as such by the U.S. government. And there is no place for terrorist sympathizers. And our next guest today has really faced this head on. She was censured by an Ivy League college campus for calling out the atrocities and calling them what they are. You may have heard her name, Sahar Tartak. And we're welcoming you to Unmuted and thrilled that you are joining us. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Now, let's go to the start on this. After the October 7th attacks, you wrote a an op-ed piece and a column about a student group, Yale for Palestine, Yellies for Palestine. And you called, uh, called them out for what they had to say about the single largest deadliest attack on Jews since the Holocaust. And weeks later, the Dale, Yale Daily News edited your column to, and I'm going to quote what they said, remove unsubstantiated claims that Hamas raped women and beheaded men. That is their quote. And there is irrefutable proof that this is what Hamas, a terrorist organization, had done. So why do you think that after the fact and after the column was published that they came back calling on you to edit your work? Yeah, thank you for asking. It's an important question because the Yale Daily News is supposed to be a legitimate source of news on Yale's campus. I believe it's the oldest college paper in the country. So to see them do something like this, and by the way, for me to contact the editor and give them a chance to correct it, and nonetheless receive a non-answer is pretty horrifying. The answer is that this is anti-Semitism, pure and simple, right? So, so the first wave of anti-Semitism that we experienced following the October 7th massacres was groups like Yalies for Palestine justifying Hamas's brutalization, torture, murder, and rape of Jews and non-Jews in Israel, civilians. And I guess we could call this a second wave, is denying that those brutalities happened in the first place, saying, no, the Jews are exaggerating. By no means are they victims of persecution. These claims are false. Again, we know that this is not true, but students at my university and people across the world basically cannot accept that Hamas is far from resistance and is rather a terrorist organization. Yeah, so then if looking at it that way, then you have this student organization who is supporting terrorist instead of supporting Jews, but they're also encouraging the killing of Jews by supporting Hamas. So how disturbing was it to you that the publication sided with the Hamas sympathizers and corrected your column? So of course it's horrifying. It's not necessarily surprising. There is a long history of global anti-Semitism. It, it manifests itself in different ways. Excuse me, but I think I think sort of a story that maybe I can share that is worthwhile and gives a more productive response to this sort of thing is of a friend of mine, Netanel, who at an anti-Israel rally went next to the rally, stood beside the rally 
with a flag of Israel, an Israeli flag on his back, and prayed the Jewish morning prayers right beside the rally, basically to show them that we're still committed to goodness and to God, and that we're not afraid of people who want us dead. You know, to me, uh, when you hear the reports about how a baby was put in an oven and burned and women were raped and killed, I, I just cannot conceive of how anybody could support a group that does something like this. I mean, how can anybody defend these terrorists and these brutal, atrocious acts? So the method that I find my peers to be using has been to evade the question, right? I say, you're justifying terror. They say, occupation warrants resistance, and so on. There, there is no... There is no discussion that these that these new members of Hitler Youth are willing to have, they're they're steeped in an ideology, and that ideology is denial. It is evasion. You say, look at this picture of a burnt baby's body, and I'm sorry to be crass, but that's what happened. And they just look away and say that it's not real, because I guess that's the easiest thing to do when you feel the need to side with the perpetrators. Well, you know, we have seen all across the country how Hamas sympathizers have really taken to college campuses to harass and intimidate Jewish students. So I'd love to hear from you. How is Yale handling the situation and what do you think colleges ought to be doing? Sure, that's a really important question. So our university was unique in that the president made a statement condemning Hamas's murders. However, it's a pretty low bar that Yale's statement condemning the murders are, is still one of the best statements coming out of Ivy League universities because the university has not condemned students who support the terror in the first place. Right. They've, they've completely backed out of what people are up to and what people are saying. And I'm not saying that these students don't have free speech rights and need to be suppressed. I'm saying that they need to be condemned and that the university has a responsibility to take a moral stance on something so basic as denying or justifying or somehow doing both. The events that happened on October 7th, the murder, the brutality, the rape the burning, the torture, the kidnapping. Well, I want to thank you for your courage and I want to thank you for speaking out and for being willing to share your story. I know that our unmuted audience is going to want to keep up with you. So where are they going to find you on social media? Sure. So I use Twitter. It's Sahar underscore Tartak. That's my username. I have written an article for the Washington Free Beacon. I'll be appearing on more interviews. I'm going to sort of continue being in the loop of this because I think it's important. I think that students at Yale are in a pipeline to elite newspapers, right? The New York Times, the Washington Post. I think nobody wants to see the people who are now denying this massacre be the same people who are reporting our news in a couple of years. So Twitter. Well, we are uh, grateful for your courage. And to our audience, you will always find me on social media at Marsha Blackburn. Sahar, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you today. so much for having me, Senator. And God bless you. You too.